So I'm sure you're well aware that there's a lot of tools out there that can help you be more productive, get all sorts of analytics that you didn't even know existed, and today I'm going to show you how to do that with Right Tag and Buffer. Now you might have done some searches on top social media scheduling tools, and if you did, you might have clicked on this article which mentions Hootsuite and Buffer first. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Buffer and Right Tag to help you schedule tweets and increase the viewership on those tweets. So first you want to go to your Twitter account and you want to log in. And then once you're logged in you can jump over to Buffer.com and you can click the sign in with Twitter button which will ask to authorize Buffer to use your Twitter account. Next while that's signing in we're, jump, we're going to jump over to Right Tag and we're also going to sign into that. Now once uh, we've authorized the app for Right Tag, we want to add the Chrome extensions. There is a buffer Chrome extension that I already added to Chrome and you can see it right here. And there is a Right Tag Chrome extension and that is right here. And the links to uh, get these is at the bottom next to the description for the video. So once you have that enabled, you need something to share. I found a couple of articles regarding finance. So I'm going to share this one about gold and silver and commodities. So I'm going to grab the URL and instead of going here to paste it in, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back to this article. I'm looking at it and I'm going to hit this Chrome button. Chrome toolbar buffer button and you can see it pre-populates with a shortened URL and with the title. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some hashtags in front of gold, silver, copper, uh, bear market I think will be a good one so I'll combine those two words because a hashtag can't have spaces and I'll add it to commodity and trade just because I want to see how good these are as hashtags. So what I could have done is I could have you know copied the title and gone to right tag, gone to research and pasted all that in, gotten rid of anything that wasn't a hashtag which um, is going to take me a second here and now that I've added those by hand I can see which ones are more popular than the others so I can see trade silver gold are way more popular than copper and bear market but there is a balance because the metrics you see here are a little bit more complicated than at first glance so unique tweets per hour that means not only is that your competition but that's also how many people are using it how popular is this hashtag and how often is it retweeted you can also see you know the potential viewership per hour for this hashtag and when it says that it means all of the tweets in the Twitter universe that contain that hashtag and it calculates the stats for that what percent have images what percent have links and what percent have mentions so this color coding enables you to quickly see whether a hashtag is good or not. It might be overused or it might be good, great, or just completely unused. And that's why when we go here, I can actually click on one of the hashtag keywords and see right here what color it is to let me know if it's good or bad. We can see copper isn't that great, but we can keep it tagged either way. Um, there is a balance between, uh, you know, adding some hashtags and having too many. There's been studies done that have showed if you over hashtag your tweet, it can actually decrease the engagement, and that is not what you want. Uh, generally, it's between two to four, but there is some wiggle room there. So let's say I am going to click on gold, and if I click on this drop down, I can actually see what associated hashtags there are with gold. So, you know, jewelry, that makes sense, Etsy, and you can see it gives you ideas for other hashtags. And if you click, uh, you know, open in a new window for this hashtag, it'll actually show you the analytics for that hashtag and it gets pretty in-depth with uh, the trending graphs for volume, the reach, and uh, the structure historically along with influencers related to that hashtag. But remember we're already looking at a hashtag related to the one we were interested in. So you know we have plenty of hashtags right now so we're not going to look at any of these related ones but it is nice to know that that's there.
The stats we looked at earlier, unique tweets per hour, the retweets per hour, the potential hashtag views per hour, they're all here and they give you a quick idea of how tweets with this hashtag behave and how they're structured. Do people put images there? Do people put links? How often do they mention other Twitter profiles? So, you know, it seems that when I mouse over to these different keywords I've tagged with the pound sign, we can see that they're all pretty good. None of them are overused or unused. And uh, another thing that's good to know is that we can see what influencers are associated with this. So, uh, you know, I can click on open in a new window and I can quickly see that influencer's profile. In this case, uh, you know, we wouldn't want to use this because it's not in our language. Uh, although there is the translate page that is uh, likely not the route you want to go. Uh, you know, somebody like this that quotes, promotes insurance firms, it's not too related, but, you know, maybe uh, you'll get tired of doing this pretty quickly, but you might find somebody that's related to trade. And the EU policy on foreign affairs, tech trade, that seems pretty appropriate, so we uh, will tag that person, or should I say we'll mention that person by adding the plus sign. So now we've effectively added a mention to our tweet. And uh, you can see the mentions related to trade right here. They don't often have mentions, but they do often have links. And let's also see what images are related with the, tr with the trade hashtag. What we can do here is we can select uh, Twitter and we can view what kind of trade images exist in Twitter. Here we happen to have nothing, but on Flickr we can see that there's some different trade uh, images. However, you know, trade isn't uh, the most general we want. Probably we, we want investing as the keyword we're looking for, and we'll see what kind of images we have. So it looks like we have some sort of ancient coin, and that seems relevant in terms of materials and the app actually instructs you to drag in the image so that shows you how it's pretty easy to add an image to your tweet now you know we have negative one now and we need some more room so I'm actually gonna remove this mention um, not the most ethical thing to do but we do want to get this tweet out and we can also remove some of this so we can actually send the tweet out. Now, some of the other things we see is you can get full stats on copper by jumping out to a new tab and once again seeing the analytics page for that hashtag. And uh, what else you want to notice is that you can add different social media accounts. Here we happen to have Twitter associated. And then we can go ahead and uh, schedule the post, which will give us a calendar. Or you can share now, or you can share next, which will add it to your buffer queue. Now you can uh, check out your buffer queue and see that it's scheduled to be shared at 414. And you can choose to edit it by, uh, once again, you know, using the right tag integration with Buffer to change any of these things. So you can choose to edit it if you'd like it, and you can save it. And once you have more than one thing in here, which we will quickly do right now without adding any hashtags, I'll just go ahead and add it to the queue just to show you what that looks like. Uh, you can then decide to shuffle them and it will shuffle them around. Uh, in this case it didn't move them much. Let's see if one more click will swap places. Looks like that's not going to happen. But when you have a lot it will actually rearrange them in case you shared multiple articles from the same domain and wanted to set them apart as well as you can manually drag them and rearrange them and you can switch it to a custom time at any point. Now I do want to reiterate that you can only connect one account and continue to use Buffer for free. If you want to work with multiple accounts you'll either have to pay or you'll have to use a different platform. I actually tend to use Hootsuite because that 
enables you to integrate a lot of different social platforms and I tend to use Buffer for my private account. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. This is my first video, so please don't be too brutal in the comments. And I uh, look forward to creating more videos for you guys. And please subscribe to the channel so you can see more great videos about social media, uh, WordPress, Google Apps, Adobe Photoshop, and much, much more. Thanks, guys.